In this video, I'm gonna to reply to your questions and comments on a recent YouTube video. There was a specific viewer, his name is Voltaine. He left a series of comments, uh, as you'll see here, and I'll, I'll start sharing right away so we can jump right in. This is an individual that's really into uh, classic footwear, heritage wear, workwear, all of that kind of stuff. And he's really, really mindful about making sure that he's caring for his shoes properly and he's taking a nuanced approach or a nuanced look based on the tannage, the type of leather, the whole nine yards. So that's something that I can really resonate with. And I definitely want to uh, give him the responses to all the questions that he's asking. And I figured the questions are very thoughtful. So why not just make a video of this so that I can share that information with everybody. I went ahead and pulled all of these comments into a Google Doc just so that I could uh, kind of keep track. All right, so this first question I think is pretty straightforward. Out of curiosity, what do I think of Saphir uh, Involver Spray? So for those that aren't familiar with it, we'll pull it right up. All right, so this is that Saphir Super Involver Spray. And the question was, would I recommend using something like that on Shell Cordovan? And for sure, I would not. A spray like that is really something that's geared towards uh, suede, nubuck, rough out. I'm sure that it says you can use it on smooth leathers, but I would not. A smooth leather is not really something that you want to waterproof or you want to seal in any way. Now, the topic of uh, VSC or Venetian shoe cream is one that comes up often when talking about Shell Cordovan, and it's one of the products that they use to uh, finish the Shell Cordovan. That said, I'm not a fan of Venetian shoe cream. They don't disclose what the uh, ingredients are in the in the product. And uh, just using it from my own experience, it's not very effective. It seems to give a, uh, a nice shine, but I don't know. It just has a weird film that stays on the surface of the leather. Just talking about, would I ever recommend it? I would not. Generally speaking for Shell Cordovan Care, I like to just use a product like this. Hopefully we can uh, get that to focus. So this is the uh, Pure Polish Products Cleaner Conditioner. Not only is this a uh, very effective product, and as you apply it, you'll definitely notice that your leather is being conditioned, it's being hydrated. There's not gonna be a weird film on the top of your leather. And also they are disclosing what the ingredients are right on the label here. So overall, how frequently would I recommend conditioning? It really depends on your unique use and the environment that you're in. Obviously a dry or a humid environment, something that's much more um, labor intensive versus kind of a city life type of thing, or something that you're in the suburbs and you're in the car all day. Like all of those are gonna have different use cases and you should really be going off of that. If it doesn't look or feel like it needs to be conditioned, you don't need to condition it. I think that's as direct as I can be with that. All right, moving on to the next question. So this is a continuation on the topic of Venetian shoe cream. You know, re referencing the uh, finishing that Alden or Alden, 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 Alden puts on their shell cordovan. Everyone has their own finishing process. No one really discloses what it is that they're using for it, but I prefer a much more natural level of finishing. Shell Cordovan has such an iconic look and, a, and an iconic luster to it that when it's different, you uh, notice that much easier than you would with a calfskin leather. Alden is kind of known for their almost like plastic looking luster that comes on their Shell Cordovan. Looking at the next one here, so this is a little bit more nuanced as we're getting into the Horween Essex question. So Horween Essex is a specific type of leather and I'll pull this up as a reference. So here's Horween Essex leather. So we're gonna go to Tannery Row. Tannery Row is the uh, retailer that's uh, alongside of Horween Tannery. So um, let's start with the basics, which Essex is, Essex is a base tannage with no additional waxes or finishing, and all of these leathers use the Shell Cordovan recipe of tannage as the base tannage. So when we're talking about Essex versus Derby or uh, the other one that they referenced was Dublin. This is Shell Cordovan. This is Dublin leather. This is the brown nut, and uh, if I flip 
this over. This is the English Tan Dublin. So as you can see with the Dublin leather, this has a more waxy finish to it than the Essex, but it also has a very unique and iconic pull-up. So as I do this, you can see my hand is underneath and the pull-up is actually where it's getting lighter. Now, the reason I show that is because these leather mats have been on my desk for probably like almost a year now. Basically, like I've conditioned these with the Pure Polish Products Cleaner Conditioner. And uh, it's been perfectly fine. That same product could easily be applied to the Essex leather, and it's not gonna cause any harm. I always go back to this because it's a great all-in-one product. You could clean the leather, you can also condition it, and it will darken it. It'll even back out as that product evaporates overnight or just over probably like 20, 30 minutes. I typically would stay away from anything like a renovateur or anything that has too thick of a consistency because that thick consistency is, it's not going to kind of like fare well on a leather like that as far as it's going to apply kind of unevenly, at least in my experience. So I would recommend something like a pure conditioning product like this, or even um, Bickmore, Bick, Bickmore, Bick4, I'm not sure. I would recommend something like that as well. It, that's kind of like a harmless product. You can get away with using a lot of it. I don't necessarily think it's the best thing out there, but you could probably get away with getting a big bottle rather inexpensively, and you could use it without harming that leather. So we're talking about the Stitch Down Patina Thunderdome, a quick public service announcement. Patina is not scratches, scuffs, and cuts. This is, again, this is a, a cut of Shell Cordovan, and you can see there are scratches, scuffs, marks all over this. This isn't patina. This is something that I could do in a day, or in an hour, just by scratching it up. What patina is, is actually letting the leather age conditioning and feeding nutrients into the leather so that the uh, natural oxidation of that mix of oils and that natural wear that you just use the product, like that's what patina is in my opinion. Don't purposely just like beat the crap out of your boots for something like this. If you want to, I guess you can, but I wouldn't recommend doing that approach for it. I would recommend wearing them like you normally would and condition them frequently when they need it. That's really going to expedite the patina process because the more oils, the more solvents that you can introduce into that leather, it's going to further push that patina process along. All right, let's jump down to the next question I highlighted here. I didn't put these emojis in, Voltan did. But anyway, so stitch down starts October 1st, and I get that patina Thunderdome is not for dress leathers. Uh, I mean, it could be. I'd still happily take whatever you recommend for that leather, still pure polish. If so, I'd have to pick up new brushes and products when the time comes Otherwise, it's a lot to do in 10 days. Now, you do not need to get a new set of brushes for different brands of polish. You, at best, can have a dark and a light set of brushes for black and dark brown and then tan and like walnut creams. But ultimately, you can use one set of brushes across different brands. No one's going to know or care. Now, as far as let me jump back up here, I may have missed one. Um, all right, so I did miss a question, but we'll get that right now. This is, I was wondering if the wax paste for pure, pol or the wax paste from Pure Polish products is safe to apply on the whole boot or if it's gonna crack. So that's definitely a good question and I've got an answer. All right, so we're gonna do a live scientific experiment and uh, this is 100% scientific. So let's uh, jump right in. We're gonna switch this around so you can see what it is I'm doing. And here we go. So here is, this is uh, camel leather, but it really doesn't matter. If we look at the Pure Polish Products paste, so this is not high shine, this is the paste wax. This really, you should use this primarily on the toe and the heel because it's paste and it's going to build up if you apply too much of it, or if you apply any significant amount of it. Now, I have definitely applied this across an entire shoe before, 
But when you do that, you want to uh, just press into the tin. That is more than enough polish. And then uh, as you're going around, you just are going around the entire shoe and uh, using circular motions, you're gonna kind of like buff it into the leather as you're applying it. It's going to raise the luster ever so slightly. It's going to apply some additional protection. So yeah, paste from Pure Polish Products or any company, you want to apply the paste and focus that on the toe and the heel. You can do a very minimal layer across the entire shoe, but again, very conservative in how much you're using. Hopefully I was able to help you out here, Voltan. Let me know if you have any further questions, which I'm sure you do, and I, I really do appreciate that. Please continue to drop those in the comments and I will definitely get back to them. Anybody else that watched that same offer goes to you. Put those in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. I'll recap my shoe care methodology here. It's very simple. You have conditioners, cream polish, paste, and high shine paste. High shine paste is pretty obvious. It's for mirror shining. Paste wax is something that you apply to the toe and the heel to protect it from scuffs, scratches, dings, anything where those hard countered areas could be damaged or just see additional wear and tear and you wanna protect it from that. You can apply the paste across the entire shoe, but there's a risk of creating a less than ideal aesthetic and you need to balance is the minimal benefit that I get of applying this all over outweighing the risk of creating a not appealing look on the shoe. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. It's just something to think about. Moving backwards, another step, you have the cream polish. It's not a, a true conditioner all and by itself, but it will give your shoe and your leather a little bit of conditioning and it'll, re it'll also rejuvenate the pigments that are in the leather very minimally. It's not gonna darken the shoe. It's not gonna change the color of the leather. All the way back to the beginning, you have your conditioning products. This is a product that if you have a good solid conditioner, which I would consider this to be, can and most likely will darken your leather and any conditioner will do that to a certain extent. That is simply because you're hydrating a leather that is dry. When you uh, hydrate something that's dry, when it's a leather or a skin, it's going to uh, darken because that's kind of the process of introducing those oils and the conditioning properties back into the hide or into the pores. Again, that original look that you have as your baseline was a leather that was dry. Just keep that in mind, manage your expectations, always start with small conservative amounts being applied at a time. You can always add additional layers, but it's very difficult to uh, remove a layer of conditioner that's already soaked in to the leather. And uh, let me know if you have any other questions, drop those in the comments. Hope you guys found this helpful and I'll see you next time.